Hello and welcome back to the Miracle Minded Podcast. This is your host and spiritual transformation coach, Nicole Sylvester, and I'm so happy that we have this time and space together. Today, I want to talk about a topic that felt really hot to me this morning. I have seen several posts online about women that were declaring that they were fed up with the realm of transformation, coaching, all these things. And I have to tell you, I have been there. I have been there. And I want to talk about it because I am a woman that lives in surrender and curiosity to transformation. But what I've learned over time is to really be intentional about my why. Because if we're not intentional about our why, we're going to go in and out of it. And it can be this very extreme situation. An extreme situation like I'm all in. I'm so excited. I'm doing it all. And then you get burnt out on it. And then you're like, I'm done with this. I don't like this. I don't want to be a part of this. This whole industry is shit. And I just want to help you find an equilibrium, some harmony. Especially for those of you that have a gift. I've even seen this with some of the women that have gifts as coaches, as guides, as healers, and they're in this mode. So whenever I see that, not only do I resonate from a part of me that was like, yes, I've been there in my past. And then the thought process, the beliefs and the understanding that I had to discover for myself to move beyond that. So we wanna make sure that we are transforming for the right reasons. And we want to make sure that we understand what transformation really means. Because you might think, you might feel, you might believe that you are transforming because where you are now, who you are now, you're not enough. You might think that you have something to prove. This is very common, like I have to prove I can hit the $10,000 a month because if not, I'm not good enough. I have to prove I can hit the $100,000 a year because if I'm not, I'm not that good enough. If I don't hit the $1 million a year, I'm not good enough. Something's wrong. I'm missing something. We see this in the realm of relationships, in the realm of health and fitness. If I don't have this relationship, If I'm at this age and I don't have children yet, if I'm at this age and I'm not married yet, if I've been dating for this long and I'm not engaged yet, if I've been working on my fitness and I still don't have a six pack yet, if I'm still not looking like that Instagram model on the internet that has been photoshopped, then something's wrong. I'm not enough. There's this external pull, like pulling to be and and to drive yourself towards this external thing. And I want to come through today with a short episode. And this episode is just to come through with some potent truth that you are enough. You have nothing to prove. The reason that we lean into transformation from a healthy perspective, from a wholeness perspective, from a spiritual transformation approach, because I am a spiritual transformation coach. It's from the understanding that there's nothing that you're missing. There's nothing wrong with you. There's everything right with you. And we are here to unhook, uncord, unravel, and help you become, to help you remember, to help you step into the truth about you. It's who you've always been. It's who you were coded to be. But the reality is that if we don't unplug from the programs, that we will be suppressed by the programs and the programs are the limitations like I don't have enough money I don't know how to do this you might hear my dog drinking water in the background but we're just going to go with it because this is what it's like sometimes (laughs) I know I'm enough I know this podcast episode is enough we have nothing to prove so we're going forward but the way these programs look are it's hard to make money all relationships our struggles. All relationships are hard work. No one eats healthy all the time. Only people that are obsessive, you know, like stories, rich people 
are unhappy. Women always complain. It's hard to make that much money that fast. No one's going to pay for that amount. This, these are just like examples. They're programs. And for me, I looked around at my life many times. And I look around and I'm looking at, based on what I can see, based on my reality right now, what programs are I, am I still plugged into? None of us are here because we're perfect and complete. And there's no more unfolding that's possible. We are limitless potential connected and and essentially our infinite intelligence. There's always more that we can unfold. There's always more that can be revealed. There's always more that's becoming. Life is constant flux. Evolution is here for us. But when we get really caught up in the 3D world and we're looking around and we're like, Things look hard. It seems hard to change this. That seems impossible. This person won't stop getting on me about this thing. This person won't accept that I'm no longer happy in this relationship. My old clients are complaining because this new price is too much for them. I seem like I have so much debt. How am I ever going to get out of this? I feel like I've already invested so much in myself. Why would I keep investing? It's taking me this long to put on the weight. How am I ever going to get it off? All of these things are really 3D issues. And when we tap into spiritual transformation, we're opening up to more of a 4D and a 5D reality. To shape shift our 3D reality. And we begin to experience miracles. Like what is a miracle? A miracle is a natural expression. It's a natural occurrence. It is very natural. Some people would say it's supernatural. It's not. It's natural. But what becomes a hindrance to our miracles is our beliefs. Because we can get the download, the nudge, the ping that we want to do a thing. But guess what comes through? The mind. The mind comes in, but not only the mind, you know what comes through? The programs that you've learned. The programs that have been driving the ship the whole time. The programs that got you into that relationship. The program that created that with your money. The program that happened to take over and to teach you to eat this way, to move your body this way, or to not move your body that way. Because it's just normal. I know in my family, the program was very normal for me to start doing drugs and drinking at a normal time, at your early, early age. No one even questioned it. When I told my mom and dad that I started to dance and I got a job at a strip club, they were not even like, what in the, what on earth? Like, let's have an intervention. Like, let's help you think of new ways to make money. When I told my parents that I was flying cocaine on planes, in taking it from Las Vegas to Philadelphia to make money. They were not shocked. They weren't like anything. They were just like, this is the way we all live. This is our program. Our programs are to do shady shit, to try to beat the system, try to shortcut life, to try to get rich quick. That was a program. When I told my parents, I'm in an abusive relationship, And I want to leave. And when they saw me with a black eye, and it was not for the first time, and it was not the first abusive relationship, they agreed that I should go back and try to work on it. Now, I want you to get all these things. It's programs. So I undid all those programs, and it was not easy because I learned that love comes with pain. That sometimes love hurts, not because you're disappointed, but because you literally get punched in the face. That's the kind of things that I learned and lived in those programs until I was in my late 20s. And then I had to undo them. And then still, there were programs around how often to drink. And that, yeah, some people do take pills to relax. And some people do have to go out and drink and get drunk 
and that that's just what happens and that I was in a relationship where there was no physical abuse and everything looked great on paper but there were just really nasty fights and shutting down of love being silent and silent treatment things like that and that is also abuse and then I had to realize like this is also a program that I didn't realize I had now I'm unplugging from that when it came to my business and when I had to begin to sell something there were programs that I had to unplug from in order for me to be okay with making more and more money And this is the thing that you have to understand. If you look around at your life and you look at your closest friends, it's not that this is who you become because they're influencing you. And I know that people say that. It's who you become because it's really who you are. And I don't know if if you've ever heard that because I don't know that I've ever heard that. But that's really my belief on that. It's not because these people influence you. If they've been your friends, yeah, you guys influence each other. But the reality is that there's a resonance there. And when you look around at your closest friends, you all have common agreements about the kind of relationships you'll tolerate, the kind of money you can make, how quickly, how much money you hold, what you save, what you invest, the kind of investments you make. Do you stay in a realm of caring for your body do you invest in body care do you invest in energy work do you invest in business mentorship and spiritual growth and development all of these things are you someone that's more likely to struggle on your own and figure everything out are you someone that goes directly and hires help all of these things are programs and their resonance like it's you resonating at the same level so when you are ready to resonate at a different level AKA vibrate at a different frequency. You have to begin doing different things. And if you understand that there is a natural pull, like gravity pulls us to the ground, there's a natural pull towards your unconscious programs, then if you really understand that, then you understand the level of dedication that it takes for you to lean into transformation. So it's one thing to be like, well, I'm at this place and I really love it and I'm just going to maintain it. Maintenance is one thing. And this is something I ask my clients. Are you looking to maintain where you're at or are you looking to truly transform? Because I need to know because I need to know how serious you are about transformation. Because transformation is going to require you to do things that are not comfortable. Transformation requires you to do things that mean you're leaving behind the program and what that feels like is I'm losing myself. I'm losing myself. I'm losing my life right now. I'm losing my security. And when a woman feels like she's losing her security, there's a natural wave of emotion that comes through. And it's like, can I survive? And if you have children, then there's like the fear of can my children survive? Can we make this happen? And the thing that you have to understand about life is that your brain and your body, if we want to call it your gut, we want to talk about your heart, but really your your body is wired and in full communication with you to give you the insights and the next steps of everything that you need to do. You may be deeply disconnected from this or you may not trust it yet, but the way that you develop trust is by actually listening. I want you to think about a friend that you may have had a relationship with or maybe you currently have a relationship with and they call you up and they ask you for advice but they never take it. They're like, oh, I'd love your feedback on this but they never, they never take it. They like don't even really care that you told them. It's almost like they just want to hear themselves talk and they want to hear you talk and then they're just going to keep doing whatever they do. Have you ever been in that situation? If you are someone that has boundaries and if you're someone that honors your time, you're going to speak to that person and let them know like, hey, I just realized like this isn't really information that's landing for you. So I think it's best like hire a mentor, hire someone that can help you with this. They're paid for that. I'm a very direct person and that's one thing about me. You never have to worry about me doing something I don't want to do. You never have to worry about me pretending that I like something I don't like I'm always going to be kind but I'm just very direct because I feel like it just saves everyone's time and energy 
and it keeps our expectations clean and it's I feel like it's a form of trust like I really trust people that are honest and direct and when someone can't tell me no and someone can't be direct I lose trust from them it's like well I can't trust you to tell me what's really true so I don't know what's true so back to what I was saying if this person is asking for advice and feedback and it doesn't mean they're going to take it every time but they're just one of those people that is just like not ready for a solution they're wasting your time they're wasting their time in this same relationship with our intuition if you don't listen to it it just becomes part of the noise you won't really understand is that my intuition or is that my mind and is it fear and then you just operate in this like tolerable level of confusion and chaos and you're unwilling to truly become conscious consciousness is something that's forever unfolding and we go conscious and unconscious right but what I mean by that is just generally speaking you're waking up so this is a reminder to look at your relationship to your intuition to your body and ask do you have a relationship with it are you really honoring that or are you more so living in alignment with your fears so all of these are reasons to stay supported to continue your journey and the thing I want to tell you about transformation is it's about tapping in to the inexhaustible well of your own giftedness, your own intelligence. You know, it's said that we have the gifts, the treasures of our lineage in our DNA. It's here. Now, if your family struggled, if your parents had hardships, you know, all of these things, they didn't have the same opportunity and maybe the same wherewithal to unlock their gifts. And the reality is that you have a different opportunity. And this is why I personally love to work with women that have businesses or side hustles because it's a way that we can tap into infinite abundance now I am of course talking about financial abundance because I'm looking out back in my Austin place and I see all of these trees like trees on trees on trees on trees and I think about all of the leaves all of the ants all of the little creatures all of the birds all the feathers on the birds like there's so much abundance 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 but when we talk about financial abundance we begin to tap in not only to our creative flow and abundance but to our financial abundance and all that that can do for us and the people closest to us and not only the people closest to us how the money streams and all the ways that people we hire the things we buy so that's why I love to work with that but this is the thing we have to understand about transformation when we're looking at ourselves from the for- place of I am already enough I'm coded for these things I'm born for this my DNA already represents all that I am built to become. This body is a vessel. It's who I really am. I am going to release all that is in my way. I am here to let go of the limitations that I've been plugging into. I'm here to let go of the beliefs that have kept me small. I'm here to let go of the beliefs that have kept me in fear. I'm here to let go of the places and spaces that I've settled within. When we start to live this way, we can use our feminine energy, which is our intention, the way we feel. We fill ourselves up. We choose things like mentorships and inspired communities. And we fill up our our minds and our hearts with information and music that supports all of this. Our feeling good. That is the feminine part. And then the masculine part is the structures. It's like taking action, making plans, using systems, hiring your team. We have to do both. So I send this out to my community on today, January 11th, which as you know, 111. And I send it as this like rally cry for all of my people out there that have kind of lost hope in your transformation or decided maybe I'll just do it a little easier I'm gonna settle a little bit maybe you decided like you don't even need transformation anymore I'm gonna love myself as I am 
transformation begins with I love myself as I am. And I think that's the biggest thing that we've missed. I think that's the biggest thing that the personal development culture can miss out on sometimes. That it's so much about a race or about the like ultimate hacking that we forget to look within and just drop into deep devotion to self and so much love for self. Whenever I've done something because I didn't love myself or whenever I've done something because I didn't think I was good enough or whenever I've done a thing because I thought I had to prove something, it never worked out for me because it wasn't coming from the right place and it wasn't even aligned with my heart and soul. Everything that I've done with the foundation of I am enough, I'm a divine identity and I am here to unfold more of who I really am, it changes the game. It changes the game. So I invite you to practice that, to use that. And if you've ever done any of my programs, then you understand that my programs are unique in the sense that we have a strong spiritual component. You don't even have to call it spiritual, call it science if that's what feels better. But we are using breathing techniques. I am using activations to reach your subconscious mind while you're in a trance-like state. I have all sorts of hypnotic situations and everything that we do is a little bit different each time. The reason why this is so important to me and it's really necessary to me is because I understand how we work. And I don't want you to only have a strategy. I want you to have the strategy and then be the energetic container that can actually carry out that strategy. I don't want you to know just about how to create a money miracle. I want you to understand that you are a money miracle and I want you to feel that in your heart and know how to move through life like that. Because if you don't, you're gonna get caught up on lack and limitation. You're gonna get caught up on what, how hard something is. You're gonna get caught up in that 3D world. So this is your reminder. Why are you transforming? Are you transforming to prove something, to get something you're lacking, to show someone that you're finally enough, to finally be that person? Are you transforming because you think you have to fit a certain box or a certain mold? Or are you transforming because you understand that you are a treasure chest that has barely begun to open to all of its blessings and you want to get to know yourself? You want to get to know what's really there and you're really curious about the beliefs that you've bought into as facts that are actually false. But to do that, we got to stay curious. We can't project, we can't close our hearts, we can't close our minds, we can't blame others, we can't tear down a whole industry, we can't give up a whole realm of transformation. And we also have to understand that it's our responsibility to move ourselves into new territory in this feminine way and in the masculine way. So what I mean by this is, what are you doing that is going to impact your energy this year? How are you filling yourself up? How are you keeping yourself at a high standard? You know, the women in my community, that's the one thing that they can count on me for is I'm always gonna hold them to a higher standard. And not from a place of you're not enough, but it's I know how enough they are. When you have people around you that believe in you that way and remind you of your truth that way and then have the practices and activities and the teachings to back it, your life changes. Your life changes. Not if you don't do the work, but if you show up for the work. You have to show up for the work. So my friends, I want to invite you to look at it. The feminine, filling yourself up, surrounding yourself in the energy, being activated, coming alive, being inspired, having your vision elevated. And then the structures. You have to take the actions. You have to make the plan. You have to use systems. You have to hire teams. All these things, you don't have to do all of them now. You don't have to do any them in any order. You'll know when you're ready for a thing, when you're ready for a thing. But the thing about new territory is like walking into that territory a little bit before you're ready and being like, oh shit, here we go now. <laughs> Deep breath, let's surrender now. And then there's ways to prime your energy to handle that and to activate that. It's really important stuff. It's really important stuff. But again, it has to be something you're ready for. So play with these things, journal with that. And I have a thing for you. I wanna share this with you. I'm gonna do a more in-depth episode on this, but essentially I wanna let you know that I've decided to retire from mentorship. 
I am retiring from mentorship because I decided there's just so many things that I want to bring to life and I need to pull back my energy from intimate mentorship which is you know it's it's holding really deep relationships and being very involved being in boxers being in sessions and the space that I hold for my clients for their visions for their dreams it was something that I decided so for the last three years I've done masterminds I've done these nine month programs that are very intimate that I have a deep connection with everyone there the first year it was 10 people last year we did it for eight people and this year I was going to do a program where it was eight people that I was doing this with and as I I had one person that signed up and it was a client that I love so much and then as I was talking to women that were just coming into my world I started to sense how much energy this really requires of me and even though I've been doing it for three years just as I said in this message that your body will give you the hints and signals and signs of what you need to do next and it won't be the things you have to do next from fear it's going to feel like oh my gosh that's expansive but that's kind of scary can I really do it and that's exactly what happened to me when I got this feeling that I was to give up mentorship because I felt like a, I don't want to make the wrong decision. Can you relate to that? Like, damn, what if I mess this up? What if it's the wrong decision? Well, this seems really dramatic. It seems like, you know, a lot. So I decided to sleep on it. I am an emotional authority anyway in my human design. If you know what that is, then you know. But I also was on my moon. So I was like, well, maybe my energy is just low. So my energy just feels like we are not going to hold eight more women this year. But as time went on, it was about five more days and my client wanted to make her remaining payment and she owed about $18,000 total. So I, and I share this with you, here's why. Because I want you to understand that money isn't a reason why we should do something when our body is telling us no. And I feel like a lot of people miss out on that part. That money is excellent, it's a tool. I love money and money loves me. And there's so many ways to make money. We want to align ourselves with the way that, that we make money that feels the most expansive and supportive to our dharma and to what we're being called to create in the here and now. So I'm working on a new book project. I have another project that's more of a product. There's like things that are flowing. There's ideas. I have my courses that I've been refining and I have plans and visions for those. There's so much that we're automating. Like there's there's big plans and it needs my energy to be big. So not only have I been transforming my lifestyle, which I'm going to share about very soon, but I just felt that feeling and I decided and I knew. And you know what's interesting, because some of you may relate to this, so I want to bring this up too, is I, I really didn't want to let down my client. I, I wasn't too concerned about letting down anyone that I was in conversation with because there was no commitment, there was no yes. But my client and I were already celebrating spending, spending another year together. And I love her and we have a beautiful relationship and that's one of the, the greatest gifts of intimate mentorship is that in intimate mentorship, the intimacy, the connection. I know so much about my clients. I hear about their children. Uh, they hear about me. They know, like, you know, we share. It's an intimate space. It's, it's, a very, it's very beautiful. And I didn't want to let her down. But I had to trust this, and this is how I make my decisions. That if I'm getting the signal that it's for the highest good that I make another choice, then it's for the high, highest good of everyone involved. And one of my energy teachers, she, my um, acupuncturist, she's always, she's always giving me mentorship while I'm on the table though. <laughs> one time I was trying to make a decision and I could feel that I was making a decision out of obligation because I didn't want to let the people down that were involved. And she said, there's a saying in the energy world that if you're making a decision and other people have their hooks in it, meaning they're connected, they're involved, that whatever decision you make, it's going to be for the highest good of all. So I've always since then made my decisions that way. And I want you to, to know that because too many women make decisions from a place of not wanting to disappoint someone. So guess who gets disappointed? You. 
guess who gets to do something that your body knew that you didn't want to do? You. And when you try to do things that your mind says, we're going to do this, but your body doesn't want to do it, and you're awakened and aware being, hello, suffering, my old friend. It's coming for you. (laughs) It is coming for you. So if you are here to live a life that is liberated, soft, open, activated, alive, electric, abundant, you have to stop doing things like that. So that being said, it was also another fear of what if I miss them? (laughs) I don't know if any of you have had this feeling, but if you have clients for a long period of time, like it's a relationship. It's a freaking relationship. And I know there's some people that are super detached from their clients and like I've been in mentorship situations where it's literally like you, there's there's no play. It's no connection. But since I've had my, my mentors that are like amazing, they're such great humans, I can text them like, you know. And because I know that relationship, I that's the mentor I want to be with the people that are in my world. So I'm I'm blessed for that. I'm grateful for that and I was like what if I miss it like what if I miss it and I and it's a wrong decision and I already said I'm not going to do this now so there was all of that and I just had to continue to pray continue to work with my body and when I say work with my body to listen deeply to do the practices and the processes the things that I teach my community and clients and it became so clear that it was undeniable and I had to make the decision. So I made the decision and I let my client know and of course she was so understanding. And the way that I operate is of course, I'm, I'm happy to give you a refund. It doesn't matter that it's non-refundable. And I wanna share this with you all. I've heard people say that their client, their coaches have let go and canceled things and then they're just like, but it's non-refundable okay but you just voided the contract if you decide you're not going to carry it through my friends so I just want to put that out there for a little like business tip business awareness so I give them the option like do you want a refund what do you want do you want to transfer this and you know luckily I I have such an amazing client she's like I don't want my money back I want to keep learning from you but see that's the kind of relationships that I get to build so that's such a blessing And yes, I will miss those kinds of relationships. And I'm sure next week when I have no mentorship clients and it's finally over, I'm going to be like, wow, it's quiet. But in that, I have the responsibility and the the call that's on my heart to create what I've been called to create. So I just trust it. I trust it. I trust it. I trust it. The, The other thing I want to tell you about this, and this is going deeper, but I have to teach you the lessons because it's it's just what I do is that in doing this, I knew that my December went from being a very prosperous month because I'm usually selling whatever is coming up January through September or January through the end of the year. So I'm usually selling private client packages and intimate mentorship programs, such as Mastermind and, you know, one-on-one containers. So just so that you have an idea of that, right? Like my last December was a $68,000 month or something. It was it was high. And this December, it was not. And I decided that I'm okay with that because I didn't want to sell anything for the sake of having a big December because I'm in a race. I wanted to honor my body that my body just said, we are resting right now. There's a big transition that's underway. Trust it. Let go, let go, let go. So I did. And within the few weeks of all this happening, this was all happening behind the scenes, that I had this crystal clear clarity of how I wanted to move forward. And can I tell you that it felt so expansive, so rich, so energizing. My, my generator system was like, this is it. And this is why it's so important to know how we feel. When I get on a conversation with women and I hop on a call with them and even in my group calls like Miracle Realm and things like that, I ask, how are you feeling? And I think that some people probably assume that I'm just asking this generic question so that we can be kind and courteous, but no. I'm asking how you feel because I want you to get so in touch with how you feel because how you feel is an invitation. It's a reminder. It is something that you get to 
listen to, honor, and adjust. But when we're so used to living in shit, frustration, exhaustion, burnout, obligation, we're treating our energy like it's no big deal. Our energy is our most precious asset. Remember that and move like that this year. So my friends, what I want to let you know is while I'm not doing intimate mentorship, I have one more place that I am doing mentorship in and it's ending at the end of this year and I'm only inviting in women for a certain period of time this year and that's through March. So it's like huh, just weeks that we have left really, you know, two months plus and that is the miracle realm. The miracle realm is the place that I am really pouring my energy into. It's the relationships that I'm connecting with in this way. And it is now taking the place of me doing one-on-one mentorship and the mastermind. It's the only place where I'll be working with women in this way. So it's a really sacred place. It's really important. And I've even reimagined how I see it and how I hold it. And in that note, there's so much goodness that's going down in there. Not only do you have access to me in the mentorship calls, and that's where we really get to dig in and refine. And you get to really look at some of the beliefs you have and we get to look at them and ask questions about them if you're curious if you're one of those people that likes to come online and to actually talk to me and to get that insight i am here to help you flip the script to see it differently you can also be someone that just listens in to receive to see what you get from that but i will i do i do want to give you a little nudge here That you can get so much by listening to someone else's experience. But if you're willing to be visible, you're willing to be vocal, and you're willing to stop hiding, while it's so uncomfortable sometimes, it will change your life. Because remember what I said, it's not always about being comfortable. And that's why I'm saying like maintenance. Do you want to maintain where you're at? Or do you want to dig into transformation? Because transformation requires you to be a, a bit uncomfortable. And that's okay. You don't have to. There's periods of time where I've chosen maintenance. And there's tri- periods of time where I've chosen transformation. And we, we got to get to know where we're at. So the miracle realm, the thing I love about it, it's six months. You have access to everything that I'm doing live. So we have money, 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 money coming up in February. February is a money month. So there's something big, something refined and something really exciting that's coming in February. But not only that, we have everything that's in the library. There are enough courses and programs and recordings that could last you for doing six months in that library to really getting what you need from it. We are adding on Monday all of the recordings from my October event. So that's two days worth of process. We have three guest teachers and it is a profound experience. You could do that broken up over the course of two or three weeks or you could do it on a weekend and be on a deep dive mission like we were. But nevertheless, it's being added. We have some new things that are brewing. I'm not going to announce them yet. But we'll have something that's coming in March. We'll have something that's going to happen in April. There's good things that are coming and I would love for you to be a part of it. If you want to be one of the final and last people that are joining into the miracle realm and that are joining into this mentorship with me, I would love to have you. This program is something that is meant to help you shift your mindset. It's to help you deepen into spiritual transformation. And it's also to help you really deepen your connection to your body, to your intuition, and to allow your soul to guide you. There's two programs in there that are really life-changing. Embodiment of Grace, which is literally the embodiment of grace. And then there is Embodied Awakening. So if you're on a soul journey, this is it. These programs, they go deep and they're about energy. They're about consciousness. They're about so much. The other thing is that we have money programs in there. We have Money Medicine. We have Well-Paid Woman. We have Unwavering Woman that is all about the science of embodied confidence. So if you're someone that's like lacks confidence, you feel a little funky around really trusting yourself, that is a really big one. 
So there's a lot going on and I just sent out a questionnaire to my ladies in the miracle realm to ask them how I can support them best in this year. So if you're someone that's ready to join us, Again, you're going to be one of the final people that come into this group and that finish out this program with me. I would love to have you. We are going to have a beautiful time. And you're not going to be the same person on the other side of the six months. If you're someone that wants to be a part of this, we will send the same questionnaire to you. And I want to know how I can help you keep your promises to yourself. I want to know what you want to bring to life because I want to help you with it. I want to know where you're feeling stuck, where you're feeling stressed, where you're feeling stagnant. I want to support you with that. And I want to know what excites you because I want to know how we can help fan the flames of that. All of this is here for you and I would love to have you. So if this is something that calls to you, check it out below. And my final, final word is this. I would love to ask you for a favor. All right, it's an easy favor. It'll take you a minute. It could even be 90 seconds. But I want to ask that if this podcast has helped you in any way, shape, or form, whether this is your first time listening or you've listened for years, that if you have not yet, if you could leave a review, just an honest review, it would mean the world to me. This year, I'm really being more mindful about bringing more value here for you all. And to keep this coming and to keep this flow, I would love to hear from you and to see that this is landing. So it would really mean the world. It's I can't see your faces. I can't see who's listening. So it's not like we're on Instagram or anything like that. But it really matters to me that I see that it that it helps. That this work is doing something. So if you could leave a review, it would mean the world. Whether it's, you know, um, five words or a whole paragraph. All of it matters. And it helps me bring on better guests in the future. Which is what I intend to do. So if you could do that for me, I would just be so, so grateful. And if you do that, I would love to give you a gift. So take a screenshot of your review, send it over to support at NicoleSylvester.com and put podcast review in the subject. Send that screenshot over. You don't have to say anything else. My team will know exactly what to do and they're going to send you over a gift from me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. That's my way of just appreciating you and thanking you. So my friends, I know I said this was going to be a short episode, but there was more I wanted to share and I'm so glad I did. I hope it served you. I hope this inspires you. I hope this was the reminder that somebody needed. And you know what? I trust it because that's how the universe works. It pings us and asks us to create, to speak, to share, to show up. And it's always because it's meant to reach someone else. So believe in that, believe in your power. And remember, you are enough. It's time to let go of everything that's not you. Blessings until next time.